bring in Jessica Louts. Uh, she is deputy chief economist and vice president of research at the National Association of Realtors. And Jessica, um, higher rates, I guess buyers of new homes have been able to make their peace with them somehow uh, and, and by necessity, perhaps. But is there anything that might bring out more inventory that can allow the, an easing of this logjam that we've seen with uh, existing home sales? Well, certainly we also have seen building permits up slightly, and I think that that's an encouraging sign. We do need more housing inventory. We really have been under building in the U.S. for a substantial period of time, and it's going to take a lot of inventory to actually meet the demand that's sitting on the sidelines right now. Slightly lower prices for new homes, I think, is certainly encouraging, and that's bringing in home buyers into that type of product. You mentioned adding inventory through building, but what about just the, the reluctance of people who are locked at low mortgage rates to put their homes on the market? Is there, is there anything that can, over time, change that? Well, certainly they have golden handcuffs. I think there's a lot of reluctance, a lot of separation anxiety from that low interest rate to be able to move. But we have to remember the main reason why people move is because something in their life changes. So whether that's a new job or a new baby, it's going to mean that that person is going to have to move and find a new home to accommodate them. And that could be maybe a larger property. It could also be a retiree who needs to downsize and actually be closer to the grandbaby. Diana, um, just paint us a picture of the overall affordability uh, outlook at this point and, and where it leads us to, to, to think volumes are going to go at this point. Well, affordability is still not great at all. And in fact, it's getting a little worse. We got the S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Report this week as well. It's kind of backward looking, but it actually is showing prices gaining again for three straight months. They peaked last June. They came back in the fall and they're very, very slightly down 0.2 percent year over year in April. But again, they're rising again. And the reason the builders are doing so well is not just because they're lowering home prices a little bit, which they are, but also they're buying down mortgage rates. So they're allowing people People not to have to have that six and a half percent or seven percent rate. They're buying into the five percent range, which gives them that cushion for a year or two for the buyers getting into the market. And that was really huge for the builders in the fall and continues now. We're actually seeing builders do less of that because they're getting so much demand. They don't have to. But again, on the existing home side, remember, it's all that supply and demand crunch. When we say that we're really low supply, we are half the supply where we were in 2019 pre-pandemic. And even in 2019, we, will, we were below historical averages because we'd been underbuilding for so long. So it's going to take a long time for that supply situation to come back up. And until it does, prices are going to have a floor, no question. Yeah. Um, Jessica, Diana mentioned uh, that, you know, the, the regional bank perhaps reluctance to, to lend as freely is, is pinching a little bit on uh, things like jumbo mortgages. Are you concerned about financing availability or is that something that at least this market has going for it, that there is still an ability to, to leverage housing? I mean, lending is still incredibly tight, but I think one of the things that we have to remember right now, too, is we're also in a unique environment where a lot of baby boomers have a lot of housing equity. The typical consumer who's been in their home for a decade has about $200,000 in housing equity. And what we see right now is for older boomers, half of them are paying all cash. A quarter of the market overall is paying all cash. So, yes. Interest rates matter. They absolutely do, especially to first time home buyers. But I think they matter less today than they had historically. Interesting. And Diana, you know, there's this other wrinkle where it seems as if uh, there's maybe it's anecdotal, maybe it's actually statistically relevant. Uh, people choosing not to sell a home when they have to move, but to rent it out because the rental market's been so strong. What are we what are we to, to make of that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We don't have the numbers on that exactly. But, you know, I've talked to a lot of folks who are thinking about downsizing and they're saying, you know what, maybe I'll keep the home if I don't need the equity to buy the next home or even if I'm going to rent. The rental market, especially the single family, we're seeing apartment rents ease up quite a bit, but the single family rental market is so strong. And it's kind of this this uh, cyclical thing of if you can't buy a home, you have to rent a home because you can't afford to buy a home. So then the rents go up and mm. it makes it even less affordable to rent the home, but it's still cheaper than buying the home. If that made any sense. No, it does. So, yeah, it people are saying, why not rent? <laughs> 